Welcome back to the Webby and O'Neill channel. Thanks for joining us for another video. In today's video, we're going to be discussing the Glazers, Jim Ratcliffe, Sheikh Yazim. Now, it emerged this week that Sir Jim Ratcliffe has put in a £1.5 billion bid for 25% of Manchester United. It's being discussed as a staged takeover of Old Trafford. We want your thoughts and opinions in on this one, Reds. But first of all, I want to know your thoughts on this bid. Well, this bid from Sir Jim Ratcliffe gives absolutely no stability in my eyes to the club. Uh, only confusion. He wants a minority stake. He wants to be able to buy chunks of shares as time goes on. Who's in charge? Who will be having the say so? It just sows confusion. I think from the very outset, uh, when this was announced uh, nearly 12 months ago, the, the takeover, the sale, the way it was done has just sown confusion and chaos. And Sir Jim Ratcliffe, everything about his bid from the very beginning has been chaos. Uh, Ineos want to come in to this uh, club. They want to buy shares. They want to buy it in, a, in chunks. And at the end of the day, they want to exit with a profit. And it's just a commercial thing. When, when I listen to Sir Jim Ratcliffe, when he's gone on about United, it's all about I'm a Manchester United supporter and people bought into it. This now is just utter confusion. And it's going to be very, very difficult to get this over the line. It's, it's uh, how can I say it? It's fraught with lots of danger if the Glazers go along with this. You've just said that you think Ineos and Sir Jim Ratcliffe just want to buy chunks of Manchester United to make a profit. So do you not think the end goal then is for a full takeover of Manchester United then? I, 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 no, I think uh, other people will keep shares. I think they just want uh, control, uh, a majority share. Uh, that that's how they look at it. They're in it for business. They're in sports already, Formula One, other sports. Uh, they've got minority stakes in these uh, ventures and they want a profit. Ineos are in it for profit. So Jim Ratcliffe is just a Manchester United fan with loads of money and he's a businessman. And that's what's going on here. A very smart businessman, we must say as well. You don't go and, you know, accumulate his wealth if you're just a nobody or you've got no sense in your brain. Now, for me, Jim Ratcliffe, I think he's playing it smart myself. I think he's looking at the bid from uh, Sheikh Yazim. He, he don't think it's going to be accepted from the Glazers of five billion. We've seen reports that the Glazers value Manchester United at more towards £10 billion, a future estimate. And Sir Jim Ratcliffe, in his lifetime, I don't think Manchester United will ever be worth £10 billion. So for me, he's playing the smart game. He's looking at other ways in finding control of Manchester United yeah. with the eventual control, shall I say. And he just thinks this is a step in trying to get that for me. And as a Manchester United fan, do I prefer that bid? No, I don't. I think the best option all round is for the Glazers to leave to accept a bid from, let's say, Sheikh Yazim. And I just think Sir Jim Ratcliffe, yeah, he is playing a smart game from his point of view, Ineos's point of view, where they will make money if they do have this bid accepted of 25% for £1.5 billion. But in the long game, I want Manchester United to have stability. I think we need at least 15 to 20 years of stability from one owner who controls 100% of Manchester United. And like you've just said there, I think this bid from Ratcliffe, if it's accepted, I just think it just brings more questions without any answers. And I just can't see the stability of what Manchester United are going to get. No, there's definitely going to be no stability. But what I don't understand is Sheikh Yazim coming out with saying, uh, well, his his group saying uh, we're still committed to the bid. They know what the Glazers want. They're not mm. giving in the Glazers. And for the Sheikh team uh, to come out with and comment and say, Manchester United don't need another minority shareholder, uh, it baffles me because who, who are they speaking to? Who are they speaking to? The Glazers? The Glazers don't listen. They know what the Glazers want. So Jim Ratcliffe knows what the Glazers want. And he's trying to work something out uh, to get control uh, over a long period of time. That's the way it's going to be. He won't pay what they want for the club to be sold in its entirety in one go. Uh, Sheikh Yazim isn't willing to uh, pay that. And Sheikh Yazim isn't coming in in any other way. So it looks like we're going to go down this long road, this chaotic road, right, of uh, shares being sold, the stake increasing. But we're going to also go down the road of who's really in charge. It's chaos enough as it is inside Manchester United. Who's leading the team? Who's leading the transfer policy? What's this? What's that? 
absolute carnage. I, I fear for this club going forward uh, the longer this goes on, but it will go on and on and on because uh, the Glazers are prepared to sit there and wait until they get the deal they want. No, no, I totally understand that. And I agree that the Glazers are sat there. They want the price that they've set themselves. And if they're not going to get that, they're quite happy to sit there and still remain in full control of Manchester United. And it did say in that Times article earlier this week that Sheikh Yazim feels as though it's a pressure tactic from Sir Jim Ratcliffe in tailoring his bid to that 25% for 1.5 billion as to make them up their original offer of 5 billion. I, I, I just think that's confusing. I think that's yeah. ridiculous, to be honest with you. Yeah, I do. That the idea of Sir Jim Ratcliffe is just playing the game for the Glazers just to up their bid, I just think it's nonsensical. But for the 5 billion, what they put on the table, I think, I think that's a fair price, to be honest with you. You've got to look at the state that Manchester United are in on the pitch, when are we going to get back to challenging for titles, Premier Leagues, you know, European trophies again. It's going to be a long time, if we're perfectly honest with, with ourselves. You look at the infrastructure, the stadium, what that needs doing to it, you know, the development there, the yeah. costs, the training ground. And I just don't think Manchester United off the pitch commercially, commercially sorry, is going to attract enough uh, money for Val to... to put it like a value for seven, eight, nine billion in the near future. And like I say, I don't think Sir Jim Ratcliffe will be alive when the club is going to be valued at 10 billion. If it's ever going to be at 10 yeah. billion pound, the Glazers might want 10 billion. They might have forecasts for, you know, uh, broadcaster rights, you know, different setups in the Champions League, other club World Cups and all that sort of stuff. But it's just never going to be that. And it's just about pure greed. And we've seen that ever since they took over in 2005, the dividends they've been taking out. Yes, they have put money into the, the playing, well, the players in, in the club, the signings, et cetera. But, you know, at the end of the day, the book stops with them. Yeah. They've put people in certain positions who aren't football people. They were bankers, i.e. Ed Woodward. And they've just destroyed this club whilst they've been in charge and we're now paying for it. Yeah, we've got, we don't seem to have any clear plan from Sir Jim Ratcliffe going down this minority uh, shareholder route. Uh, mm -hmm. No clear plan whatsoever on yeah. clearing the debt, uh, money going into uh, to provide for transfers, no money, mm -hmm. no clear idea on restructuring the ground in any way whatsoever. Yes, Sheikh uh, Yazim has come up with a clear structure, but his bid's not winning and it will not win, not as it stands now. Uh, and, I, and I'm really like, Getting a bit peeved with Sheikh Yazim still hanging around uh, and commenting on Manchester United. Uh, the bid's in, yes. It's not accepted. It's not accepted. So you're turning around now criticising uh, uh, Sir Jim Ratcliffe about wanting a minority state. Look, you're in no position to criticise anyone. Uh, it's Sheikh Yazim what needs to be criticised now because at the end of the day, the Glazers aren't going to change their mind on what they want. And it's a clear indication that they will, over the long term, get what they want with Sir Jim Ratcliffe. Uh, they're twisting him round their fingers. Sir Jim has turned round many times now and said the Glazers are good people. He's known them for a long time. He gets on well with them. That seems to be the way it's going to go. So for the Sheikh to stand there uh, and come out with comments, well, the people around him coming out with comments saying the minority state, uh, the way it's going to go, isn't good for Manchester United. We'll do something about it. Get up, get off your seat, get in there and start bidding and give the money. Uh, and if you're not going to give the money, then just, just walk away because Sir Jim Ratcliffe is clearly in talks, in discussions and clearly knows how to get what, the, well, how to give the Glazers what they want whether it's over a period of time or a short-term thing. But at the end of the day, I'm getting sick to death for this. Let's get the club sold. Let's see what happens and let's try and move on. Yes, it will be confusion. It will be chaotic with Sir Jim. But at the end of the day, the pressure is now on Sheikh Yazim. Yeah, no, I understand what you're saying about, you know, getting sick of it. I am, and I think a lot of you out there are, you know, it's been going on now for, what, roughly 10 months since the Glazers originally. originally. Yeah issued that statement looking for, you know, extra finance and, you know, possible sale. 
And for me, I'm, I'm not going to beat Sheikh Yazin with a stick here. I understand, you know, the business side of it where he doesn't want to be ripped off, basically. And um, I think we all know, you look at the, the valuation of the club right now, it's nowhere near the valuation of what Sheikh Yazim's actually put a bid in. So it's not worth five billion. He's put a five billion pound bid in. And, you know, fair, fair play to him for doing that. And I just think for me, the Glazers were always looking for multiple bidders for a full takeover of the club. And the thing is, they've been shot. Yeah. And they've not got that. And that's what they wanted. And obviously, there's multiple companies out there who have bid for little minority stakes just to invest into the club to help out with the infrastructure of Manchester United, the stadium, the uh, training facilities. But at the end of the day, I just think Sir Jim Ratcliffe's playing it smart. Like I said, he, he wants, in my eyes, he does want the majority of control over Manchester United. Yes. And he's looking at different ways and how he's going to get that. He's got his ear to the floor, the people around him must be hearing little bits and pieces from the Glazer camp in basically saying the five billions not even testing the water with us over a full takeover. This might be the better option in trying to get your long-term goal of buying Manchester United. And it's the route he's taking it, buying little bits of shares here, there and everywhere. Well, shares when possible. And I think in the future, so Jim Ratcliffe will be the owner of Manchester United. I can't see Sheikh Yazim being the next owner of Manchester United. I just don't think the bid's there. I don't think it's, you know, wetting the palate of the Glazers at all. And I think Sir Jem Ratcliffe is being the smart one in restructuring his bid to get what he wants. Oh, I, I agree on that. He's, he is being the smart one. Uh, and for Sheikh Yazim to keep sitting on the sideline and not accepting that he needs to up his offer, if he's not accepting a up his offer and he can clearly see, we can all mm. clearly see that Sir Jim Ratcliffe is in conversations, he knows the Glazers and he's going to sort a deal out one way or the other. So Sheikh Yazim, as far as I'm concerned, I want a full sale. He wants to buy the club. He's talked about investing uh, in the infrastructure. He's talked about clearing the debt and everything. It's absolutely ideal what every Manchester United fan wants. Uh, so he either stumps up the money or just walks away uh, and let Sir Jim Ratcliffe get on with it. That That's how I see it. It's not my preferred thing. It's not what I want. But at the end of the day, we've got chaos, carnage, everything inside, outside the club and everything. This just needs to be done. Have a clear path uh, and get on with it. And then, oh, at the end of the day, things improve. But my opinion is it won't improve. It'll just bring more seeds of doubt uh, confusion, everything. But hey, you know, the better people than I am out there, they're the ones with all the money. They're the ones with the business intellect. They should know what they're doing. Uh, but at the end of the day, I am not confident. Uh, so say, shake Yazim, just sort yourself out or just walk away. That's how I see it now. Yeah, no, I understand some parts with what you just said and I'm sure a lot of people out there will as well. But like we discussed, this is big time business. This and yep. some people, when they're ba bounding about, you know, a lot of zeros on the end of numbers, you know, they don't want to be ripped off. <clears throat> and I totally understand where he's coming from, but he must surely realise that he's not going to get what he wants at that price, and he's definitely not going to be the next owner of Manchester United for five billion pound. It's gone on for too long with me. I think the Bla the Glazers are. They're quite happy where they are at the moment. They, I don't think they're in any rush. It doesn't seem like they're in a rush well, to sell Manchester United, make a knee-jerk reaction and take that five billion. And like I say, he's been the smart one here, Sir Jim Ratcliffe. He knows what the Glazers are like. He's already in front compared to Sheikh Yazim in my eyes because he's had these conversations with him in the past. He knows what they want. He knows what sort of people they are. And he's playing the smart game. For me personally, I'd want a new owner to come in and have 100% control of Manchester United. And the only offer that's on the table at the moment is Sheikh Yazim. So he would be my preferred owner. Well, but I just don't think he's going to get it. And Sir Jim Ratcliffe's going about it a different way. Will he end up getting what he wants in a full takeover of Manchester United or being the majority owner? I do think he will do if that bid's accepted or he makes a deal in some sort of way with the Glazers. Well, I, I look at it this way. If he's going to pay £1.5 for 25% at the end of the day, is paying the value of £6 billion what the Glazers want. Uh, and he expects, uh, as it's a commercial deal, to walk away at some point with a profit. So, really, it is £6 billion, yeah. uh, the value of what he's paying. So, uh, uh, Sheikh Yazim, mm. 
he knows that it's six billion what's going to be paid, the value of that club. That's what it's being sold at. Because if he buys 25% at 1.5, the club's valued at six billion. So Sheikh Yazim, you either cough up the money or walk away. That's what's being discussed. Uh, and it looks like you're going to be blown out the water. You can say what you want, when you want. It means absolutely nothing to us fans. Uh, so at the end of the day, cough up the extra money. If, if you, you really want it. If you really, really want it. You don't have to mm. keep to all your promises what you've made. You can adjust, just like Sir Jim Ratcliffe is adjusting. Cough up the rest of the money and then adjust with the way you're going to pay off the debt the way you're going to pay the infrastructure and everything else like that. Every United fan would understand that. So at the end of the day, yes, it's big business. You people out there try to buy the club, you know, more than us fans. But at the end of the day, to me, 1.5 billion for 25% actually gives a value of £6 billion. And Sir Jim Ratcliffe, one way or the other, whether he brings debt onto that or not, is immaterial. It's been valued at £6 billion and it's going to be bought over time with the value of six billion now. And he's doing a commercial deal and expects to walk away with a profit. So there's a business idea there. There's money to be made. Mm. So at the end of the day, just cough up the six billion and let's move on. Yeah, don't get wrong. There's a little bits of leaks here, there and everywhere, isn't there? I know there's a, a non-disclosure agreement in place, but you know, there has been little snippets here, there yes. and everywhere over the last 10 months, you know, probably leaked from the Glazer camp, the rain group, possibly Sir Jim Ratcliffe to shake. And it did say in this Times article this week that they believe that Sir Jim's Ratcliffe's, Sir Jim Ratcliffe's proposal, sorry, is feasible in the way he structured this new deal as well. Yeah, it's feasible. Uh, he's had a long time to work on it. It is feasible, but the structure of it is very complicated. Very complicated yeah. with like A and B shares or something. I'm not really uh, fully clued up on it. It's to do but, with the voting rights, A yeah, and Bs. That's right. So, you know, it is complicated. Mm. So if it does get agreed, it won't be done straight away. Very, very tricky to work. So we just need to move on, to be honest with you. Uh, but I, confused I am. Confused everyone out there. It's going for six billion. So why hang about? Uh, shake that's what I say and that you know to be honest with you I can go on and on and on about it mm. right and there's other little things you can go the stories what come out we can't really be 100% sure mm. on all the stories what come out yeah. but that minority state one what Sir Jim Ratcliffe's going for mm. is on mm. and the value is on and it's going to be paid yeah. one way or another so yeah I agree Gary Neville was speaking about the Glazers recently as he, he normally does he always has an opinion on it when he gets chance, and yeah. rightly so, to be fair. And he did discuss the Glazers recently and Eric Tenag and the effect that he's, uh, that's currently having on the team. And he said, I feel, very sorry. I feel very sorry for the manager. I know a lot of people will say that he's got to do a lot better, and that's fine. He's the Manchester United manager. But there are a lot of big problems at the club, but managers have found out over the last 10 years. I think until those problems are solved we'll still continue to see underperforming teams, underperforming players. It's been a graveyard for coaches and players. It's not too strong a term. And well, I totally agree with, especially that last part there, if you could hear me. Yeah, well, the, what's the, name, the, the chaos and the confusion of who really is in charge, who do the, uh, you know, if you look at the people running the club inside there, who do they actually speak to? Do they turn down someone's voice uh, request? If Sir Jim Ratcliffe requested something, do they turn it down because they're not the uh, majority shareholder? Confusion will reign all the way through. So if Gary Neville thinks it's bad now, to me, mm. it'll only get worse with the confusion. So at the end of the day, mm. let's get it sold. Yeah. Depressing, isn't it? It is. Uh, I don't even think we've like been proper. I don't think we've smiled once, actually, throughout no. this video, because that's how it gets us. That's why we don't really do too many videos on this, because... Yeah. Let's have it right. You know, we're just football fans and the level of business that's being talked about there, it's very high level. It's at the top, in it? 
So it's it's very tricky. It's complicated to discuss as well. You don't know what's actually going on because his NDA is all involved. So you're just speculating a lot. And we of the don't time. know the truth, and we don't know the truth. So we're going off reports, and you don't know whether it's the truth or not. And but it's, it's the a, it's heart a, as well. Yeah, and and it's a strong subject, and it's a you know it's a subject about Manchester United, something that we all love. Yeah. So when you're discussing it, and we've got owners who have just been bleeding the club dry since they took over in 2005. It's a passionate subject and it's something that gets people angry. It gets people serious in talking about the football club and the way they look at the owners. So, yeah, it's, it's one of them I just thought we'd have to do today. Something a little bit different because yeah. we've not discussed it. And it, I know, think I think when, when when you talk about it as fans, like, yeah. like we're trying to discuss it, I think what it is, it's not seeing a clear path. Football mm. fans like to see a clear path uh, of where they're going, where the club's aiming to go. Uh, whether it's transfers or whether it's like restructuring the ground or anything like that. We like to see, like, there's the plan. That's the journey we're on. And this does not give you a clear plan. And all it, it, it just sows, like, doubt in your head as a fan. You don't know what's going to happen next week, next month, next year, nothing. Uh, and this deal, uh, what's being talked about, reportedly talked about, uh, gives you no clear idea. And it just... It just grinds you down as a fan mm. so the quicker the games come along and we can get back to cheering get a few wins under our belt uh but this subject absolutely is one of the most depressing subjects i can ever talk about uh and that like kieran says that's why we don't talk about it because as fans when i see people discussing it and that they either get irate walk off angry and everything and we might have you know we might have had a good day or something mm. and the, the the subject sends them in to a meltdown of depression uh, and that's why we don't talk about it and you can tell from our voice <laughs> our faces that we are angry mm. uh but we you know will it send us in a meltdown no united are playing yeah and hopefully eric tenag is the hope amongst the chaos yeah and he can lead us through this and yep. uh yeah get us back to winning ways in the in the near future but you know we've got we've got to be level edited as well look where the club's at look where we're at on the field and it's going to take at least another four to five years to get us even challenging for the Premier League in my eyes. And, you know, let's just hope. I've got to end this. I can't. Yeah, <laughs> I, can't. I know, actually. Yeah, we're going into a little bit of one. Yeah, I can't. I've got to end it. I've got to end it with a smile on my face. Mm. And I hope that United put on a blinding performance against Brentford. Glazers out. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day. And don't forget to smash that like button. Thank, Thank you. you.